is everybody doing today? Here I am just off of San Vicente Boulevard here in West Hollywood on Rangeley. And I'm doing a video about Dominique Dunn. Now if the name is not familiar to you, uh, the movie that she starred in certainly would be Poltergeist. She was the older sister and tragically she was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, John Sweeney. Right here at this house in this driveway. I'm going to tell you the story of what happened to her and then we're going to go visit her final resting place at Pierce Brothers. And on a side note, her father is a very famous writer calling this uh, Dominic Dunn. Uh, he's no longer with us, but I was a, I still am a huge fan of his writing. And when I was a kid, when I was young, in my teens, my friend, uh, best friend and I, this is a side story about Dominic Dunn. We got to go to New York City and uh, we, it was a whole thing and we, it was like a playground for us. We were running around, having a time of our lives and we were walking by the Russian Tea Room and who do I see standing outside of the Russian Tea Room but Dominic Dunn. He's very recognizable. And I went up to him and I said, oh Mr. Dunn, I'm a huge fan of your writing, that sort of thing. And he said something to the effect of, you're too young to like my salacious writing. I remember the way he said it, salacious writing. And we kind of laughed and I said something, he laughed and then told him I was in New York City and I'll never forget, he said, ah, he said, well, get your fun and then get the hell out of New York City. <laughs> and he, oh, he gave me, and he gave me one of those, I'm going to try handshakes with that, where you grab the whole arm, really warm. And I'll never forget that. And I'll never forget, because I knew at the time about what had happened to his daughter, because he was very, very vocal about uh, justice for his daughter. And the look in his eyes. He was happy when we were talking, but I just, as somebody, a parent who loses a child, especially in such a horrific, well, anyway, I, I just remember that it looked like a sadness behind his eyes. And just when we were walking away, I remember looking at him and, and thinking that afterwards, not while I was talking because I was too starstruck, but just thinking that afterwards. Well, it changed everything. Just not my career path. It was just everything in my life changed. I mean, you know, things that have been important to me once weren't important to me anymore. Things that, you know, just everything changes. Everything, every, you know, when you're, it's just such a, a jarring thing to your. But uh, her brother was Griffin Dunn, uh, actor, director. But she met John Sweeney, this guy. At a party here in LA, he was a sous chef at Ma Maison, which was a restaurant owned by, I believe, Wolfgang Puck. So she began dating him, and it was a very, sorry, very uh, abusive relationship. And she broke up with him. And they moved into this house. She broke up with him, changed the locks on the house, but he still managed to, well, I'm going to tell you what he managed to do. And by the way, he's out, and he didn't serve that much time. And the house is right up here. And yeah, I'm pretty disgusted by it still, the fact that he is out. So John Sweeney was very, very jealous and very possessive, and they often fought, and he physically abused Dominique quite a bit. And he made no efforts really to hide it, and she was covered in bruises for many events and places she would go to. There's an episode of Hill Street Blues that she appeared on and you can see the bruises on her face because she had just been beaten by John Sweeney the day before. The makeup people didn't have to apply. I, I, I don't get how that's even a thing, if you understand what I'm saying, like how she shows up with bruises like that and they just let her go on camera. I'm not sure how that happens. I remember another thing that Dominic Dunn said that he saw Sweeney pick up uh, and shake a really excited fan who was thrilled that he recognized Dominic Dunn in a restaurant. And the fan was just being innocent and all happy to meet her and he, John Sweeney, was not having it. He was that jealous and that possessive. Another person saw John Sweeney rip a chunk of Dominic's hair out of the roots during an argument. And the friend who was staying with the couple even witnessed what Dominique herself called attempted murder. The friend ran into the room and she heard loud gagging sounds. They saw Dominique being hurt, but Sweeney didn't, denied trying to kill his girlfriend. And that same night, Dominique escaped the house through a bathroom window and got into her car before uh, John Sweeney threw himself onto the hood of her car, but she managed to escape. And after the incident, she refused to go back to the house she shared with uh, John Sweeney. She stayed with her mother at different houses owned by friends. 
and she called Sweeney to break off the relationship. So she moved back into the home, which is right there. That's the house right there. And she had the lock she placed. But then she was cast in the miniseries V. And a friend of hers named David Packer, he was an actor, he was over at the house and they were rehearsing. And she was on the phone and she got a phone call. The operator broke through to the phone call and said, you have somebody trying to get through to you. And it was John Sweeney. And then 10 minutes later, he showed up at the house. So David Packer says he heard an argument break out and called the police when he heard what sounded like smack screams and then a thud. And apparently also, he uh, called a friend and said, if I die, John Sweeney did it. And there's the house and the driveway right there. I'm gonna keep walking around just to... When it's a crime scene, it's a little difficult to um, film private homes for too long. So I'm just gonna keep walking while I talk and then show some more shots of it. But the police, when they were called, they informed uh, Packer that that was out of their jurisdiction, which makes no sense to me at all. Makes no sense. Then David Packer went outside where he met with the sight of John Sweeney leaning over Dominique in the bushes. And he told uh, David to call the police and that he attempted to kill Dominique and then himself. She was rushed to a nearby hospital. She was placed on life support and she survived for about five days, but she was taken off life support on November 4th. And her kidneys and heart were donated for transplant. Now here's where it gets really aggravating and there's the house right there so there's the driveway that front door is where she would have come out i met john sweeney and then in the driveway is where it happened he was facing first degree murder charges but then he claimed he couldn't remember the incident and the charges were changed and he was found guilty of voluntary manslaughter and he served now i've heard he served two and a half years i've heard he served three and a half years regardless if it's two and a half or three and a half that's not right. That was for the murder of Dominique Dunn. Two and a half or three and a half years. Now, of course, after he was released, he went back to being a chef here in L.A. But Griffin Dunn and a few of his, uh, her friends and family would pick it outside the restaurant and say, your hands are, your meal is being uh, prepared by the hands that killed Dominique Dunn. He was fired and he moved back up to North, uh, I believe, North, he went to, he went to the, the Pacific Northwest for a while, but he's back. He's now back in California, and I know where he is. I know where he's working, and it's easily Google, Googleable. <laughs> so I encourage you to Google it. His name now is John Mora, and apparently he wants his anonymity. So I wouldn't want to share any photos of what he looks like now. And I don't really care if he's unhappy with that. I really don't care if he's unhappy with that. But that's what he looks like now. And he's working again in a senior's residence. And according to Dealey Departed to Find a Death, my friend Scott Michael's channel and page, after the uh, verdict was read, the judge thanked the jury on behalf of both families. And Dominic stood up and screamed, don't thank them for our family. And said, you withheld important information from the jury. And then the judge's career was actually destroyed and Dominic claims credit for that. And apparently also, her family also discovered Sweeney was engaged at one point. And then Dominic uh, contacted the family and said, do you know that your daughter's engaged to a murderer? And that was it for that. And then Dominic at one point, like he was really dogging him and following him around and then just said, I can't spend the rest of my life chasing John Sweeney. There's the house right there. And now we're going to go to the cemetery to pay our last respects to the beautiful, taken from us far too young, Dominic Dunn.
Dominique Dunn, beloved daughter and sister, 1959 to 1982, loved by all. Here at Pierce Brothers, where I've been many times, and and you watch my other videos, there's lots of, I mean, so many celebrities here, and I've done many videos, and I think I've included Dominique in a few of them from here, but this is just specifically for her. That's my video about Dominic Dunn. Beautiful surroundings, right off Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, tragically, it's way, way. Ugh. I hope John Sweeney's thinking about it every day. And I wish he was in jail still. Thanks for watching. Peace to Dominic Dunn and her father Dominic. Peace out.